All right, welcome to uh, the presentation, Low Thrust Space Trajectory Design and Optimization. Uh, uh, my name is Pradeepta Ghosh, and I'm an astrodynamics engineer uh, working for Analytical Graphics Incorporated, uh, where I design, uh, where I work on space trajectory design and optimization, uh, uh, develop the AstroGator module. Um, uh, in this presentation, we're gonna talk a little bit about, we're gonna start uh, talking about uh, various basic concepts of low thrust, the low thrust propulsion technology and then uh, talk about the basics of low thrust propulsion, uh, low thrust trajectory optimization using low thrust propulsion, and then also talk about how AstroGator um, SDK can help in general. So low thrust trajectory design and optimization is in general a vast topic. Um, it's impossible to cover the details of this topic in, in a short presentation, but at the end of the presentation, I'll present some slides which will have links. You can visit the AGI website and get more information, white papers, et cetera if you're interested. So let's get started. So some fundamentals of low thrust. So what is low thrust? How low is low thrust? Um, uh, well, um, typically uh, the definition is about milli G's or less. Uh, that, uh, that's the acceleration, um, typical acceleration. The thrust, uh, the, the thrust level is almost of the order of a um, few hundred millinewtons of thrust, but not more. And low thrust systems are typically uh, characterized by long thrust durations. It could be order of the order of months. And um, just kind of to differentiate low thrust with high thrust, so what is high thrust? So high thrust is of the order of Gs or more, like multiple Gs, maybe 10 Gs. And um, <coughs> they are typically thought of as impulsive uh, thrust systems. The dominant technology in the low thrust uh, world is electric propulsion systems. Um, they started with the arc jet systems back in the 60s, but uh, more, the more recent uh, technological advances have given rise to uh, systems like hull thrusters, which are becoming more and more common these days. Um, so um, there were some early proof of concept missions that flew back in the 60s and early 70s. One of the earliest ones was the SERT US mission. There were a couple of Soviet missions in back in the day that flew. Um, they were all demo missions, but something happened in the middle uh, low thrust uh, propulsion systems were kind of uh, not adopted. They were not that popular in the, in, in the 70s and the 80s. And starting early 90s, things kind of picked up again. And one of the reasons for that is low thrust systems have kind of high complexity compared to high thrust chemical propulsion systems, or the traditional ones. And so, uh, so, so the engineering of the thing uh, was relatively complicated. So uh, it's only recently that engineers have figured out you know, kind of the challenges uh, of, of, of constructing a high thrust, a low thrust propulsion system on a spacecraft. So the adoption has been more, uh, uh, the adoption has, has grown of, of late. Um, so, so here are some of the uh, missions, uh, low thrust propulsion missions that have flown. So low thrust systems are not theoretical. They have flown, missions have flown. Uh, one of the uh, test cases, one of the earlier test cases was, uh, or use cases was uh, orbit correction, geo north south station keeping. Um, um, similarly, there, there was the ESA Go GOC mission, uh, which used the xenon ion pro propulsion system for continuous drag compensation. And uh, one of the uh, popular use cases is uh, the electric orbit raising, for example, GTO to GEO. Uh, these, are kind of, these are kind of the applications that we will be concerned with in our, uh, uh, in our, uh, will be concerned with in our um, applications. Uh, so so I'll, I'll show an AstroGator uh, test case letter uh, that is uh, basically, that implements a, a EOR type of a mission. Um, so there was an UTILSAT, there was a UTILSAT mission, it's an ESA mission, uh, UTILSAT 172B that flew in 2017, and uh, it's the world's first full electric propulsion mission that uh, took about four months for uh, orbit raising uh, with tons of uh, uh, payload. And there were, of course, the interplanetary missions. One of the, the, the more popular, one of the more well-known interplanetary mission was the deep space mission, which started, which took place in 1998. It's kind of popular, well-known missions, and there have been others uh, since that time. Bepi Colombo is planned in 2018. And then there's the Smart Lunar Mission, uh, which took place in 2006, which also used full low thrust. And the other uh, application of low thrust uh, propulsion systems is precision attitude control, which we are not concerned with in this presentation. Uh, so here is kind of a, 
a graph which shows uh, the kilowatt power requirement versus uh, ISP for uh, various application re uh, low thrust application regimes. For example, uh, one way to read the graph is to look at a part, pick, pick a part particular application re regime, for example, station keeping or drag makeup. So for this application re uh, regime, we can see that this, uh, the, the, the typical ISP, specific impulse requirement is, uh, say, for example, from 200 to 1500. And the kilowatt requirement or the power requirement is up to, for example, eight uh, kilowatts. And in that particular regime, we can see that the resistojet thrusters uh, which, were, which are kind of old fashioned at this point, they occupy the low ISP but higher kilowatt regime, whereas uh, whole thrust or PPT thrusters, they're more efficient, they s produce more specific impulse at lower uh, required power, which is good. So, you know, uh, specific impulse is kind of um, um, a measure of how good the low thrust propulsion system is or how much kick your rocket motor is getting per unit kilogram of fuel spent. So high ISP translates to good efficiency, better efficiency. So what's so great about low thrust propulsion systems? So why are low thrust propulsion systems popular? Um, well, the main reason is that they allow uh, for, um, for, they allow the re reduction of satellite mass. Uh, um, and basically we can pack in more effective payload. Uh, so that is why uh, low thrust propulsion systems are becoming very popular, especially in LEO to GEO type transfers where uh, the, the, where the more mass we can pack as effective payload, the better it is. Uh, um, but so, 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 so the main point is that low thrust propulsion systems are less mass hungry than chemical propulsion systems. Uh, and they have higher specific impulses. Uh, chemical propulsion systems typically have lower specific impulses of the order of lower hundreds, whereas low thrust propulsion systems, for low thrust propulsion systems, the, the ISP or the specific impulse can run into thousands. For example, 4,000, 3,000, 5,000. Um, um, and uh, this is kind of a, an interesting statistic that full, if we use full electric propulsion for a LEO2 geo transfer, we can uh, save about four fifths of the mass uh, that would be used if we had used complete, uh, com complete chemical propulsion. Uh, and, uh, but it is also the case that if we keep on increasing the ISP, uh, it's not, you know, we cannot just keep on increasing the specific impulse and, and expect, uh, keep on expecting getting benefits out of it because the, the benefit kind of peaks at a certain point and then rolls off because beyond that point, the complexity of the hardware uh, becomes uh, too much or too great. Um, so another advantage of continuous low thrust is the controllability. So it is not as if, you know, one has given an impulse and the system kind of, uh, the spacecraft propagates uh, open loop beyond that. Uh, low thrust Im implies continuous controllability of the thrust. So, uh, for example, uh, feedback control laws can be designed for uh, uh, TCMs or trajectory correction maneuvers. And this, uh, I love this quote, which was, uh, which is attributed to Eric Berenger, who was the then head of the space systems program of Airbus Defense and Space. In an April 2015 interview, he said about half the bid requests we receive today include at least one option for electric propulsion. And then he went on to say that in our view, eventually at least 50% of the market will use electric propulsion one way or the other. So electric propulsion is here to stay and grow. So um, another uh, very, uh, so another uh, application area of low thrust propulsion systems is the small satellites market. So small satellites by the very definition are small. So they need to pack, you know, so if we want to pack more effective payload and not pack fuel, uh, too much fuel, then of course low thrust propulsion systems are, are they come to mind, and it is the case that low thrust it's, uh, low thr um, um, the small satellite market is uh, satellite market is expected to grow almost exponentially in the coming years. Uh, it's currently valued at about hundreds of millions of US dollars, and it's, it's expected to reach billions of dollars by about 2023. Um, but however, it's not without challenges. I mentioned before that. Uh, low thrust propulsion systems require a separate power unit or the hardware is, is, is kind of a, a challenge at this point. So, and, and that needs to be fitted into small satellites. So that's a challenge that, that's being worked out. Uh, however, some experimental flight, uh, experimental missions have flown. For example, the Brixat P mission in 2015 and the Prokian mission in 2015. And there may be others that I'm not mentioning, but uh, there are certainly other missions that are flowing. Um, so, so very low thrust, so low thrust propulsion systems is not without its disadvantages though. It's uh, one of the reasons is 
that the, the thrust level is really low, which means that longer transfer times are necessary and which can translate to deferred revenues. Um, but one of the workaround is to use a hybrid kind of a propulsion system. So chemical propulsion, use chemical propulsion with electric propulsion. For example, use chemical propul propulsion to super sync the trajectory for a LEO to geotransfer and then use electric propulsion to uh, acquire the station, for example. Um, um, so anyways, and the other uh, challenge that we, I should talk about and uh, the one that uh, STK Astrogator directly addresses is the fact that trajectory design with low thrust systems poses a uh, mathematical challenge. And this is something that we have addressed in, uh, in our software design that I'll talk about in a moment. So why should you care? I mentioned before that low thrust propulsion systems are being incre increasingly adopted. Uh, I'm gonna show some numbers um, and graphs now to kind of bear out what I just uh, said. Uh, now currently there are about 250 operational uh, satellites with electric propulsion systems um, and mostly they're in the geo regime. <coughs> so, but uh, low thrust propulsion systems are also becoming increasingly popular in the LEO regime. Uh, and one of the reasons is that, you know, a uh, current requirement is that the low, uh, that, 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 that satellites must be deorbited once uh, their lifetime ends. So if we can uh, pack in a lot of fuel or enough fuel for the deorbit to happen at the end of the mission lifetime, that's good. So, uh, and that's where low thrust propulsion systems uh, can help. Uh, so there are 300 plus vehicles that have flown electric propulsion systems to date. Um, and I'm gonna show some graphs that, 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 that'll, that'll kind of um, help with uh, the numbers. So we can, here we can see that the number of, uh, number, of, uh, uh, number of satellites that use electric propulsion for station keeping has been growing monotonically since 1995. Um, so, and here we can see that there is a low thrust, this is a kind of bar chart that shows low thrust propulsion, electric, low thrust electric propulsion systems by mission type. And most of the systems are, uh, most of the missions are, are, the ge are geo missions since 1994. There have been some missions that have used uh, 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 low thrust systems for, um, for interplanetary transfers and small satellites as well as LEO, but mostly it has been geo. Um, here is another uh, bar chart that shows uh, low thrust electric propulsion geo launches specifically uh, by thruster type. And most of the recent thruster types are hull thrusters that are getting used. Um, and so having looked at those numbers, uh, let's just look at how Astrogator and STK can help in designing low thrust systems. So Astrogator uh, and STK uses uh, or incorporates very high fidelity force models. For example, the HPOP, which we do not have to use because it is also the case that the higher the fidelity of the force model that we use for trajectory optimization, the mathematical problems becomes more and more challenging. Uh, and um, so, but we have a workaround for that that I'll talk about in a second in the next slide. And uh, in Astrogator, we can also model a variety of high and low thrust engine types. Uh, these are uh, constant ejection velocity or, uh, or variable ejection velocity type systems, such as the ion system, uh, the, or the ion engine, which is uh, which is which is which is a very common type of engine that is uh, typically used in low thrust trajectory uh, design modeling. Um, and we have. So if you do not want to, uh, if you do not want to, um, um, if you do not want to optimize the trajectory, it's uh, just design a low thrust trajectory. There are tools for that too. For example, the differential character. We can uh, tweak parameters of the propulsion system to achieve a particular target, not necessarily optimal. Uh, but if somebody wants to have to optimize a trajectory, there are uh, there is a variety of tools that we provide. For example, we have the SNOPT and the IPOPT uh, numerical optimizers that can help. And recently, starting STK 11.5, we have introduced something that's really uh, state of the art, which is uh, trajectory design and optimization using direct transcription or collocation, which I'm gonna talk about next. Um, so the collocation methods arose in the 60s and the 70s to solve fluid dynamics problems, and they were adopted later on to solve computational optimal control problems. The basic concept is to um, parameterize the trajectory in terms of polynomials and solve for the optimal polynomial coefficients. Uh, the numerical, the, the, the numerics are, uh, the numerical challenges are there and we have sophisticated numerical tools in Astrogator uh, starting STK 11.5 that will solve 
high dimensional trajectory optimization problems accurately. And one of the challenges uh, in, in, in using low thrust, in solving trajectory optimization problems using collocation is that we need to start with a very good initial guess, which is slightly weird uh, because we need to have an idea what the solution is before we can actually solve the problem. And this is a, this is a well-known challenge in the literature uh, that deals with trajectory optimization. And I think in AstroGator, in the latest version, we have found a good solution to it uh, in terms of homotopy. And I just mentioned that AstroGator uh, offers a variety of force models. So we can start with a lower fidelity force model, for example, a two-body model, solve the problem, and then using homotopy, we can go over to uh, progressively more complex models. And this is, uh, a, 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 this is a very advantageous workflow that AstroGator uh, provides. Uh, and there are other methods of ingesting initial guesses too, and uh, those are all documented very well. One can upload uh, an external file uh, to give an initial guess to AstroGator. That also works. Um, and uh, here is uh, a test case that I mentioned before, a GTO to geotypes a spiral out trajectory uh, using low thrust propulsion a low thrust propulsion system. This one uses a constant acceleration system. Uh, the, the problem was to transfer a spacecraft from a low Earth orbit to a geo orbit. It was an inclined low Earth orbit of 28.5 degrees typical, and the geo orbit was a traditional geo orbit of zero degree inclination. Uh, we can see that this is the, this is, this is the solution that AstroGator found from a very rough initial guess that I'll show in a moment. Uh, these graphs here show the, the, the pitch and the yaw angles, the thrust pointing angles, over about 17 hours. And uh, this red trajectory here is the very rough initial guess. Uh, to create this initial guess, we just gave AstroGator two constant pitch and yaw angles. We can see that the, uh, the, the spacecraft starts from an inclined 28.5 degree angle, doesn't even go to geo. It just keeps in that original orbit, but increases the semi-major axis. But even with this very poor initial guess, AstroGator found that trajectory, which is the optimal trajectory which I think is pretty impressive. Uh, anyways, and with that, I'll come to the end of my presentation. So please uh, visit the, these, web, these, these uh, websites for, uh, the latest, uh, to, for the latest on, uh, for the latest white paper scenarios, et cetera, on low thrust trajectory optimization and many other AGI uh, products. Thank you.